Barbados host relief concert for Dominica. It tells me as a Caribbean person that tonight over 13 million people have my back as a Prime Minister of Dominica. 28 more emergency responders receive certification and Dominica receives the first ship for the 2015-2016 cruise season. Thanks for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Nisha Charles. And I'm Kardisha St. Louis. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after the break. Thanks for staying with us. The Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has described Sunday's Dominica Children Relief Fund concert in Barbados as a demonstration of Caribbean unity. Fifty artists from across the region performed at the Kensington Oval on Sunday as part of efforts to garner support for those who suffered losses following the passage of Tropical Storm Erica last month. It is one thing to sit at the CARICOM Heads of Government meeting and speak to the virtue of regional integration and the coming together of our nations and our people as one. There, in that formal setting, it is an ideal that we work towards. Tonight, here at the Kensington Oval in Barbados, it is a mission that has been accomplished. In this crowd, I see here tonight, there are no Antiguans, St. Lucians, Trinidadians, Jamaicans, Dominicans, or Barbadians. I see and experience tonight one people from one region. I see and experience here tonight for the cause of Dominica, one Caribbean. Mia Amor Motley is Barbados's leader of the opposition and organizer of the Dominica Children Relief Fund concert in Barbados. Those who have come here tonight have come here because we have felt the pain of your people. And for you to come and thank Barbadians, not just for this concert, but from the day Tropical Storm Erica happened, Barbadians have been given freely. And this is just but one event of many other people. Last weekend, the promoters of Barbados came together and facilitated the charitable outgiving. Before that, we've had ordinary Barbadians given in supermarkets, given in bank accounts. And to give when things are hard is the ultimate generosity of spirit. Please give yourselves a round of applause, Barbadians. And know that there but for the grace of God goes I. And we say to all of you in the Caribbean, Prime Minister, we hear you. That natural disasters, when they come, that we've set a standard. Touch one, touch all. Dominica leader, the Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, took the opportunity at Sunday's event to thank the organizers of the event on behalf of the people of Dominica. Tonight... On behalf of Dominicans living at home and abroad in the diaspora, I say to the people of Barbados and our visiting friends from across the region, thank you ever so much for your kindness and love and concern. Thank you for stepping forward and up to the plate. Last month, it was Dominica. Next month, next year, next time, it could be any other nation in this region. What we have established from your response over the past month and your assembling here this evening is that from now on, we say to Mother Nature, from now on, we say to disasters and other adversity, Touch one in the Caribbean, and you touch all. For all of we is one family. A second similar concert is being planned for November in Antigua. 
And I like the way the Prime Minister put it, you know, saying that it is a demonstration of Caribbean unity. And surely it is, because we see that since the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, a lot of the regional countries have come on board to assist in whatever way they can, whether it be relief supplies, sending personnel, mm -hmm. monetary values. And now we see relief concert being held across the region. That's right, and not just you know countries. We also see um, brother and sister organizations you know rallying together. We see that UNICEF sent out several agents to deal with the young children that were affected by the trauma. We see the Seven Day Adventist Mission gave a lot of scholarships. I believe it was twenty five scholarships to students who attend the Dominica State College who lost a lot of their you know books and equipment. And you know you also see the magical group of companies giving seventy five thousand dollars in donations. So as as it's plain to see a lot of companies as well as countries are rallying together to send support to Dominica. Mm -hmm. And I just want to highlight some of the countries that assisted in the very beginning. Countries like Venezuela who not only brought in relief supplies and personnel and helicopters but they gave 300 petro casas to Dominica in its effort to rebuild the housing situation. And then we have countries like St. Kitts and Nevis who gave a million easy dollars you know, and they were criticized for it in other countries mm -hmm. but they saw the need because they would have been in, in the direct path of the storm and they were spared, so they saw that need to help in that way. That's right. Kudos to those people and organizations and countries who were there from the very beginning because I'm sure that the immediate you know, help and efforts were very much appreciated. In more news, students of the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School were second to receive their tablets today, October 5th, under the government's One Tablet Per Child initiative. A small ceremony was held on the grounds of the school to officially hand over the tablets to students, principal, and teachers. Parliamentary representative for the St. Joseph constituency and the Minister for Information, Science, Telecommunications and Technology, Kelva Daru, was elated for the occasion and to finally deliver on the government's promise. The rest to show, my dear friends, that this was a promise that was made to the Dominican people, and in particular our high school and college students to ensure that the delivery of education can be in par with the advancements that have been made in the area of technology. I will not dwell this afternoon on the negativity that some place behind these tablets, because I am beyond that, my friends. But what I see, I see light at the end of the tunnel, because never before in the history of our country have we had such an initiative where every secondary school student on the island can have in his or her possession a tool that will enable learning to be much easier and to be brought to you at your fingertips. Teachers of the school are also grateful for this new teaching tool. I must say thank you to the Ministry of Education and to the government of Dominica for making all of this possible. Um, we forgot to how it's going to help us in the classroom. Take for instance, I'm a social studies teacher and normally I bring my class, which is like 20 something students, to one tiny computer lab, the only one on Kampong. And it could be very tedious sometimes or problematic to have all of them look at one tiny um, computer screen. So the mere fact that they have... Uh, the mere fact that they have their, tab their individual tablets is going to make an activity such as this very easier. And in terms in the areas of research as well, I think the students are going to benefit a lot. I think it can be a very useful tool, particularly with um, um, demonstrations. Um, I teach um, the sciences, um, physics, in inter science, chem um, chemistry. There are sometimes certain things that we cannot really do in the lab. I think the tablets can be used as a means to for um, um, s simulations and, 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 and so forth. Um, also, I think the students can use them to research uh, in class to get things that they need and, and so on. And better yet, to help them with their homework. Sometimes we, we, we cannot, um, some, some, we have to write their homework on, on the board. But if they have the tablet, then we could give them, you know, an electronic copy of their um, um, homework. Portsmouth Secondary School is next on the list to receive their devices during the course of this week. World Teachers Day was celebrated in a very special way this year. A healing service was organized to commemorate the event on October 2nd for teachers from across the country. 
Teachers Day celebrations for 2015 were originally being organized by teachers from the southern schools of Bagatelle, Pitit Savan, Pichelet, Tetmon, Grand Bay, and Bellevue Chopin, communities that were deeply affected by Tropical Storm Erica. President of the Dominic Association of Teachers, Celia Nicholas, says it was only fitting to host such a service. Today marks a special day for us because, as I said, we have been bruised nationally at the community level and individually. Sudden deaths have visited us. This mass service is the first official debriefing ceremony of the Dominica Association of Teachers. We're going to hold several debriefing ceremonies in all the schools that have been touched, all. And this is going to be sponsored financially by the Canadian Teachers Federation, who was so impressed with the proposal that we sent to them for this briefing ceremony. The acting Prime Minister, Honorable Peter Saint-Jean, says it is a time not only for healing, but to ponder on the role that educators play in the teaching service. It was only a few weeks ago when we were all stunned by the passage of Tropical Storm Erica. Four weeks later, here we are, left to pick up the pieces and to move on. The storm ravaged all sectors of society and our education system was not spared. Many of our schools suffered some degree of structural damage. Several access roads to our schools were destroyed. Most schools were left without drinking water and electricity. And some of our teachers were left stranded overseas, not being able to get back home from their vacation. The situation appeared daunting for the education system, more specifically one in a small developing state. However, I believe that together we were able to put the structures in place to ensure the continued education of our children. The Honorable Acting Prime Minister called on all teachers to continue working with the Ministry of Education to ensure the efficiency of the education system. The Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Pitit Savan constituency, Dr. Kenneth Darrow, also addressed the gathering. The Parliamentary Representative stressed the need for unity. I, being on the ground in Pitit Savan from the moment that happened, I realized that for a few, at least, and even up till now, but for a few hours, everybody was on the same page. Everybody, no matter whether you had an eight-bedroom mansion, no matter whether you had a two-by-four shack, everybody ended up being on the same page. And I think we need, and I think Erica has taught us a lot, in that um, if we put our minds together, and if we unite, we can achieve great things. According to the acting prime minister, the education system lost much during the past weeks, including an education officer, principal, and a number of teachers. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Wash your hands. I am Adora Toussaint, health educator from the Ministry of Health. Proper hand washing protects against the spread of many common illnesses and germs. Wash your hands often with soap and water, or you may use a hand sanitizer. Remember, clean hands save lives. Protect yourself. A message from the health promotion of the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. The first cruise ship for the 2015-2016 season has proved to be more than expected. So says the president of the Combined Taxi Association, Philip Geese. The Royal Princess docked at the Woodbridge Bay port on Monday, bringing thousands of visitors to Dominica shores. Geese says the cruise season is looking up. I think this ship has delivered beyond expectations this morning. So we expect the season to continue 
in that vein, and if the season continues in that vein, then the season would be a great season for the taxi drivers. A number of initiatives are being looked at to allow for an even better visitor experience. We are expecting the um, rules um, by the minister to be brought to parliament and then we'll be able to act activate a disciplinary committee to assist us in curbing some of the challenges we have at the port. Mainly the undercutting and um, to, a, to a less extent we um, have some drivers who actually don't care the department and what have you and those are the things we will be looking at in the, in, in, in the new laws and in the disciplinary committee. The visitors are looking forward to time spent in Dominica. This morning when we woke up I looked out and I saw the, the colorful buildings on this um, side slopes. I thought this was what a true uh, Caribbean island looks like. It, um, it was wonderful. It's, it's warm which I really appreciate and there's no rain which is also really nice but uh, it's a lovely spot and uh, love to come back again. This afternoon we're going on a river rafting tour and uh, I'm hoping to enjoy that quite a bit and then we have to get back on board and we're leaving Dominica so maybe another time we'll come back and spend more time here and uh, it, it looks like a very inviting place. 174 calls are expected this season. Coordinator of the Child Abuse Prevention Unit, Gemma Azil Lewis, is reporting positive feedback from a program conducted by a UNICEF team from St. Lucia. As a result of the August 27 storm, UNICEF St. Lucia, recognizing the impact of the disaster on children, dispatched a seven-member team to Dominica from September 15th to 24th. The team conducted a psychological recovery program called Return to Happiness in collaboration with the local Child Abuse Prevention Unit. One of the things that was done before implementation of the program was that we had meetings with the parents in the, in the shelters to let them know exactly what the Return to Happiness program is and to also get a feedback from them how they feel about the program and also with the, the aim of letting them know the people who would be um, talking to their children and implementing that program with their children. Also based on the feedback that we got from the parents one of the things that they wanted was that the program to be a continued one however with the return to happiness program it is not something that is run throughout um for a um, consecutive months it is done basically through a 12-day program and of course it can be run again but initially it's a 12-day program Azil Lewis explained that from the start of the program, it was clear that some children were severely traumatized. There were children who were still scared of speaking of what they saw. There were children who were also um, traumatized because to them, they, they went through something that they had never gone through before. And some of them had to deal with retrieving their friends from um, who were found dead, for example, in Pidit Savan. We had some children who really um, broke down during the Return to Happiness program because one of the things that the Return to Happiness program does is that it lets you tell a story with the end um, coming out with happiness, hence the term Return to Happiness. The coordinator believes that the program brought a sense of closure to the participants. Helping them to vent about what happened, helping them to talk about what they, got, they went through, but in the end, helping them to be happy because they helped them to bring out the good in them to show that, hey, this really happened to me, but yes, I am alive. Yes, I am safe. Yes, I am with my family. I can go to school again. I, I see that there are people who care because people are bringing me things to eat. People are bringing me stuff. People are, are bringing different things from the toys that I lost. I am now retrieving toys. So this, is, this was now the part of happiness to them that we returned to. And the, the name of the program itself, you know, just everything together, return to happiness. And I must say again, a very special thank you to UNICEF because if it wasn't for them, this program would not, we would not have been able to implement this program. Azil Lewis told GIS News that the program has received positive reviews from parents.
As a matter of fact, the parents were in some of the, the, in the centers, especially the parents were actually there when the program was going on and also said that the children were a little more outspoken. One of the things that came out is that we saw children who needed additional help because certain things were identified from the intervention of the program and we saw that some children needed, needed therapeutic help and this information was also passed on to the relevant individuals for intervention with the children which states that yes we we did bring them to a form of happiness through the program however there need to be some form of continued intervention in terms of therapy for what they went through um, the parents did push uh, put us under a little pressure because they wanted it to continue and we, they did not want us to stop but as we told them it is not a program that goes on forever there must be a break in the program but continuing it and doing another return to happiness program is one that is being considered. Acting counselor at the Social Welfare Division, Swana Fabian, has been trained to be a local facilitator of the Return to Happiness program. I felt it was very, very, very insightful. Um, I felt like I was a child all over again. <laughs> um, felt like a kindergarten pretty much because the program is geared to children um, 5 to 12 years old. So there were activities that were um, that we were taught or trained to do and this included composing songs, um, drawing and even when I drew um, my experience because we were, we were asked to draw our experience I realized that I was somehow traumatized by the whole event at, at vicarious trauma they call that so um, it brought about um, my own realization and it also it also brought about you know I just felt like the, the children um, need intervention in Dominica for any any form of disaster and the program itself is geared to that there was a lot of thought into it and I think there's probably a lot of research that went into it and um, though somebody might feel it was a, it would be a short program because it runs for just three weeks um, the content of it w is solid and the children will benefit from it. Yes. A course which started on August 25th to train community members to respond appropriately to emergencies has come to an end, dispatching 28 repurposed individuals back to the communities. The Community Emergency Response Team program targeted Southeast responders this time with support from the Jeff Small Grants Program, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, the Dominica Association of Local Community Authorities, and the Local Fire Service. The training program, although interrupted by the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, wrapped up on September 29th. Subjects such as leadership, the role of suit, team bonding, disaster management, search and rescue, the use of personal protective equipment, and emergency medical operations, to name a few, were taught. Team leader Anthony Williams added that Tropical Storm Erica was also factored into the training. Having learned many lessons from Erica, 20 participants from the Southeast are now better able to respond to any disaster within the various communities should it come. National coordinator of the Jeff Small Grants Program, Agnes Esprit, also addressed the closing ceremony, explaining exactly why Jeff is involved. According to her, the issue of climate change is not being taken seriously. Jeff Small Grants has not been taken it as a joke. For quite a while now, we have been teaching, educating, building awareness, sharing information on climate change in partnership with other agencies and organizations like the Environmental Coordinating Unit, the Office of Disaster Management, and others who have understood and recognized that climate change is real. And so when this proposal was presented to the Jeff Small Grants Program, we felt that there is indeed a need for more of this type of capacity building. Because if we are to expect more intense rainfall, severe drought, and all the other ills that come with climate change impacts, we need to be more prepared. And this is one of the ways that we can be more prepared to have persons that are able to respond in times of these disasters. 
Deputy Fire Chief Farley Rivera assured the newly trained responders that they will be used. There was this young lady who called me. She was part of the group in Kolehu. And she called me one day and um, said to me that um, somebody had called her within the community, the community of Kolehu, asking for assistance. She had gotten burnt from a pot in her kitchen, and she wasn't sure what to do. And so she found out that this particular lady was part of the group that I was training. So she called this lady to ask advice as to what to do. You get the picture now. Once people find out that you're part of a group who have been trained, you're going to be called upon for assistance. And this is what it is all about. Florence Attila Stedman was awarded most outstanding participant. Two teams of six with kit and equipment. I think even if the committee is cut off, these boys and girls, men and women, will be able to survive and to assist the community in surviving, doing the greatest good for the greatest number. So far, almost 150 have been trained in the CERT program. And that's the English News. McPherson St. Louis is next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. No moins, c'est McPherson St. Louis. Premièrement, Dominique dit un grand bienvenu aujourd'hui pour le premier bateau touriste pour saison 9 salam. Bateau Royal Princess Nanke en la Ward, Woodbridge Bay en Wozo. Officier relation public pour combine taxi Renault Alcindo. Bien plaisir, manier bagay maché. Aujourd'hui, c'est bien content. Et bien, nous pouvons que le bateau là, par contre, le bateau là, en la Ward là, tout um, taxi driver, taxi operator, tour operator, guide, tout vendeur, tout le monde en géotier, tout le monde est happy pour que le bateau là, là, et bien, tout le monde a essayé de faire quelque chose pour vivre pour faire l'argent. Parce que comme ça, avec un peu six mois avant nous en bateau, le premier bateau là ici, je dis là, c'est un plaisir pour nous se voir. Mais um, généralement, comment on va gagner Eh bien, peut-être qu'on marche bien, nous ne sommes pas ça, dit en rien mauvais pour aujourd'hui là. Parce que ces, ces, ces touristes là, ces visiteurs là, vraiment prennent l'excursion. Tout ça, nous, peut-être pour faire, ils prennent. Peut-être que c'est une seule fois là que nous, les touristes, les visiteurs, ils prennent l'excursion. En tout ce temps là, pas que ce temps là, nous ne pouvons pas faire, nous ne pouvons pas vendre l'excursion. C'est pour cela qu'on fait l'excursion. Mais nous avons déjà fait challenge. Quel um, challenge on est? Ah, pour jouer de là là, nous pour connaître ce challenge. C'est celle vite qui peut être qui pas ouvert pour nous. C'est champion. C'est champion. Là, c'est mon la calé. Alain Lamela, elle veut pas snorkel. Elle veut garder belle bite en corps. Elle veut belle pression en bas Lamela. Place ça là là, point point Michel. Pas ouvert parce que on va le mettre dans un un salle. Elle veut. Si bite là là, elle va marcher. Ça va payer bon droit là. Que il faut qu'on vraiment range comme ça. Nous pas ni ça là. Mais toutes ces les autres sites là. Quand il tout gauche, quand tu as folga, quand c'est mal. Pour le Mero Beach, uh, tous ces autres là, ils ont tout ouvert, ils ont des chimères, des chimères débloquées, des passes, tout le monde a marché. On a une nouvelle, c'est que le secrétaire Caricom qui venu à bord assister dès l'école en Dominique et puis pas gagné pour négocier à l'école. Assistant Salah qui venu si l'on étudie qui affecte par culture américaine. Officier l'office là en Guyana, Crevel Durand, fait présentation là pour député chef éducation Dr. Jeffrey Blaise pendant une présentation vendredi passé. Parce que le ministre de l'Éducation et du Humanité et du Développement, je remercie CARICOM Staff Association pour un cadeau que les enfants de l'école nous ont. Dès l'école à Dominique, l'école Petit Savan et l'école Pichelin, ces enfants-là ont tapé en pile de ressources pour aider à l'éducation. Ils ont tapé en livre. Um, bag, um, eve, on low cadeau, et bien, moi, oui, merci, Staff Association, parce que vous, pour tout petit l'enjeu, vous, ces membres Staff Association, là, et bien, vous mettez ensemble pour vous gagner um, ces ce supplies pour ces enfants de l'école, et bien, um, nous, à la Ministry of Education, nous, nous comptons pour la donation, là, qui, qui, qui a fait ça pour midi là. On a nouvelle, le ministère de Tourisme, honorable sénateur Robert Tong, qui a créé assez tous les stakeholders pour jouer par ailleurs, qu'on saison 9 ou 20 journées. Premier bateau là, pour saison là, il y a un Woodbridge Bay bon matin là. 
ministre Tong fait parole qui ont bon environ net si vous êtes bien à tête pour ces son touristes la marche et de yoka expecte tout ces bateaux là qui a se manifeste que là que et si pour saison neuf ça là ministre Tong dit tout mes mettre en place pour l'occasion touristes qui visite en nord et de ces l'occasion là bien net et puis yo bien parlé pour accommoder touristes il y a l'autre bagaille qui est autant significant, c'est le bateau carnaval qui a retourné et puis on se cause. Trois de vous inaugural, ça c'est vous qui venez pour les premières fois. Et puis finalement, le ministre de la Santé a ces populations là pour bonne pratique de santé, au ligne de courte en Erika, et puis tout le temps nous avons existé. Maladie leptospirosis a parmi d'autres, qui a aussi concerné le ministre là. Si l'on peut m'en sécurité, le ministre Helen Roy, bon standard de santé, c'est responsabilité, tout le monde en Dominique. La case ou même, là où vont prendre, mais que je bien fan, là où il y a une bouteille, mais que je suis couvert, n'importe quoi, vous savez, qui ça fait, what, um, profiter, puis travailler plus vite, et puis moi, c'est pour faire um, assurer oui, qui ou Généo, généo pour yo breed, généo pour yo vivre. Et puis tu vois, c'est ça qui si nous n'est pour faire. Et puis nous savons tout, on parle de monde um, parce que nous savons ces petites savanes et puis nous savons ces um, colibis qui qui est affecté. Nous qu'à quoi penser ces mondes à la saillante qui sont malades? Non, à dans des astas tout côté affecté à présent parce que on parle de côté pas ni de l'eau. So même si on y y a pas y a pas cut off y a pas évacué tout, mais sous pas ni de l'eau, c'est un gros bagage. Et puis nous qu'à nous savons en santé son responsabilité tout le monde individuel et puis groupe so nous comme des monde en différentes communautés pour travailler ensemble sont bon les pour tout groupe venir ensemble et puis pour décider comment nous ça veut dire mais c'est madame ça c'est toute pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent non moi c'est Marc Fosse c'est Los au revoir coming up a tips on dealing with the traumatic events People react in different ways to traumatic events. There is no right or wrong way to respond. Be tolerant of your own reactions and feelings as well as that of others. Avoid obsessively thinking about the event. Repetitive thinking about the event can overwhelm your nervous system trigger, making it harder to think clearly and act appropriately. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website, news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Desk, I'm Kredisha St. Louis. And I'm Nisha Charles. Thanks for watching and do join us again next time on National Focus. Thank you.